Antetokounmpo, Jokic, and Doncic. Do you think they could have uh, handled you of in your not. time? No, of course not. Too little. <laughs> Way too little. Uh, that's, uh, I knew you were going to say that, but I still had to, I still had to ask it. So Shaq, thanks for having me. First and foremost, I wanted to ask you if your family is okay and you are okay with what's been happening in the world and everyone is safe. Yes, everybody's fine, brother. Thank you for asking. How about your family? All good so far. Just the kids screaming in the house. Other than that, it's all good. Good, good. I wanted to ask you something. Obviously, the 75th anniversary team has been announced. Who do you think uh, has been left out? I know it's a voting thing, but in your eyes, who do you think should have made it? I can remember one time as a youngster when I was a good player in the city. Wasn't the best, and I didn't make an all-star team. And I came home to my father, and he said, what's wrong? I said, I'm upset I didn't make the all-star team. He said, if there has to be discussion about whether you should make the team or not, are you really that good? So my thing is, if it's not a unanimous decision, there's not, nothing to you know really talk about. You know, the way I played, I wanted to Make sure you always remember my name. And I wanted to come with a different style, so I'm glad I made it twice. Again, if it has to be a discussion on, you know, why you should have made it, if you have to throw your accolades around, my question is, are you really that good? Do you think some of the guys that are still playing in the game and still young, do you think that they should have been in it? If you want to become a great player, that's all, that, that always has to be your mentality. I'm the best ever. And the, the ones that have that on it too are the ones that on keeping the game alive, and they play very well. The guys that, that didn't make it and felt they should have made it, I, I feel for them, and I kind of understand what they're going through. So we heard that um, it's going to be some preseason game in Abu Dhabi. And you know that the region is growing. So hosting events, the Formula One Grand Prix. I myself played the FIFA Club World Cup there. What impact do you think it's going to have on the league and the region there? You know, I think it's going to have a beautiful impact on the league. You know, the, the league has been trying to go international for years. If you talk about the top 20 players in the game, eight to nine of them are international players. So to be able to spread out to Abu Dhabi, I think it would be a wonderful thing. I've never been there, but, you know, I see all the pictures and see all the, you know, technology. I think it would be great for the NBA. Will you go? Yes, I'll be there. I'll be there. Hopefully I can join. I don't know if I'm going to be free, but it is, uh, it is an amazing city. I think you will have fun, really. It's hot, though. It's That's really okay. Hot. That's all right. How you like that? Yes, I do. I think it will be great for the players to be able to go there in the NBA and spy as those kids. The only thing I tried to do was the obligation that I said to myself that I have to put on a good show. And by me putting on a good show, inspiration follows with that. If you pay money to see me and my team play, we got to give you your money's worth. I didn't want to just take the money and be like, oh, we've, it's a long flight to Abu Dhabi. I don't, I don't feel like playing. Uh, we just go to the hookah bar and relax and then play. You have to say, you know what? They've never seen us before. They've seen us on TV, but now I'm going to show the land who Shaquille O'Neal is. Opportunities like that I really relish. It's the first time they've never seen you. I would, I would try to put on a hell of a game. I was uh, also the same because you never know who is coming and who you might disappoint because it will be the first and only time they see you. So you have to give your best all the time. Yes, I Thank agree. you for that. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to a personal one for me, you know, fairness. I, the first time I met you, you won't remember, but it was in 2001 when I thought you guys were the best team I've ever seen when you went 15 and one. Uh, obviously I saw the final against, against the Sixers and if it wasn't for obviously AI, doing what it did in that game, you would have done 16 and 0. So that was the first time I see you. When I saw you, I was like, damn, he's big. I felt so little. I'm not small myself, but in your world, I'm small. So I admire your career. I admire everything that you did. But as a fellow athlete myself, I've done it to a certain level, maybe not your level, but I've done it to a certain level. I want to know who was your rock. How did you deal with your career mentally? Because it's tough. People don't know that. They don't want to know about it. Who was that guy for you that you could lean on? Nobody. You know, for me, I uh, I was raised by an Army drill sergeant, so I was raised a little tougher than most youth. And I wasn't allowed to feel pressure. I wasn't allowed to be down. I wasn't allowed to be sad. I wasn't allowed to have two bad games in a row. So if you practice that, especially from an early age, I uh, met my father when I was two. 
started playing sports when I was seven. So from seven all the way to 28, when I made the finals, I had enough practice. And before you succeed, you must first learn to fail. And every time you fail, you get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier until you get to the point to where no one can stop you. Uh, no matter what they do, no matter what tactics they use, it's a mentality that not everybody has. You know, the great ones have it. I see you have a picture of Muhammad Ali behind you. He had that. You know, he went through a lot. You know, they took his title away and put him in jail and, you know, uh, wouldn't let him fight for a couple of years, but he came back and you know, re regained his title. So you have to have a certain mentality. You know, if you allow certain things to break you down and you continue to break down, then you'll never get to the pinnacle of what it is to be one of the greatest. It resonates to me because my dad wasn't in the army. I can relate because I couldn't bring happiness back home. I couldn't bring sadness back home. I couldn't bring failure back home. I had to find a way to succeed because that's how it was with my dad. But you never had a moment of doubt. I had some, but you never had one moment of doubt. I've always had a moment of doubt, but nobody cares. So if nobody cares, then why should you care? Just say you're going to a final game and you're hurt. Once they see you on the floor, they, nobody cares that you're hurt. They want to see you bring the championship home. So once I realized that, why complain? Why complain to yourself? Why complain outwardly? Why complain to anybody? Nobody cares. You just have to fight through it and remain as mentally tough as possible and go through it. Of course, I had doubts. We all have doubts. We're human, but nobody cares. I know that feeling. Trust me, I'm, tr I'm, I'm trying to be a coach. As a player, I couldn't care less about the state of my coach mentally. I just wanted to know if I was going to play, what tactic it was, and the rest, I didn't care. But now being on the other side, I start to have those feelings and have my guards down because I'm trying to be a coach and I can see that nobody cares about me even way more than when I used to be a player. Because a coach has to deal with everything and nobody cares about him. So this is why I'm going into those topics sometimes because I want people to understand that we're all human. But as you said, when we have to perform, they just don't see that one. They just don't see yep. it. Shame. You're right. You were talking about dominance before. You were talking about guys that are not American that are dominating in the NBA. And I'm thinking about three guys, obviously me being from France and being European. I'm thinking about Antetokounmpo, Jokic, and Doncic. What do you think about those guys? I mean, like I said, you, know, you have top 20 NBA players, at least five, seven to eight are, are the top players. Uh, Joker, probably the best big man in the league, MVP. Luca is a guy that can't be stopped. And Giannis, I, I, I love his mentality. Started playing basketball at an older age and, you know, made it to the NBA, found his niche. I love how he, he does it for his country, he does it for his people, and does it for his mother. And, you know, I like the fact that he didn't try to do what everybody else does and, and play with a bunch of other superstars. He, he did it. He failed, he kept failing, he kept failing, and last year they got over the hump. A couple of years, he probably will be touted as the best player in the game. Do you think they could have uh, handled you? Of course not. Time? No, of course not. Too little. <laughs> Way too little. Oh, that's, uh, I knew you were going to say that, but I still had to, I still yeah. had to ask it. Shaq, I know obviously you know about excellence. You know what it is to stay at the top. Um, how much do you enjoy to see other guys in other sports doing what they do best and for a long time because for me what's important a good career is not one two three years you have to give me 15 15 years of high level that's what i want to see how do you see it you know when i was young i watched reggie jackson muhammad ali dr j matthew johnson and i would steal what they had you know utilize it for myself but now that i'm i'm a fan and i watch it i love watching Great athletes perform at a high level. I love UFC, I love boxing. I was at a Formula One in uh, Austin, Texas. Got to meet one of my favorite, Lewis Hamilton, but you know, to see those guys just compete and get in that certain mental state of what it takes to, you know, be a winner is a uh, great enjoyment. And, you know, if you were a former great athlete, you, you know when watching somebody, when you know that they're, they're at that point in their career where they're not losing this game today, or, you know, down by one, World Cup, I got to score next time the ball touches my feet. You enjoy watching those moments. How did you prepare yourself when you were going to play against one of the greatest of the game, just like you? For myself, that's what I was dying for. I didn't want to play against the team at the bottom. I wanted to test myself against the best to show everyone what I could do against the best and show the world that I was 
the best. You know, you have that little thing in your belly as always, but I was looking forward for the fight. So in sports, of course, there's a pecking order status. So growing up watching Pilates movies, I was the young student, but I wanted to become the master very fast. So if I'm ranked number 50 and I, I play against a guy that ranks number 30 and I dominate him, that's going to slide me up. So every time I played against somebody who was so-called the best or better than me, I had to take it to him. And my mentality is I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop. And if your mentality is more than mine and you beat me, I'd go back and beat myself up some more. And I'd say, next time I see you, I'm coming even harder. So you know, I've, I've had some great battles. And you know, when you battle against great people, they also bring the greatness out of you. But I was never scared or intimidated. I was actually looking forward to, to uh, taking their spot. That's a good one for me. Last one, who was your biggest inspiration? Biggest inspiration coming up was Dr. J. Uh, he was the one that got me to play in basketball. Then, of course, Matthew Johnson and David Robinson and then Patrick Ewan. But in all basic karate movies, the student at some point must kill the master. <laughs> so that's what I try to do so I could become the master. I remember those battles with David Robinson and Akim Olajuwon. Those were big. The moves were big. Listen, for me, it's been a pleasure. I always enjoyed watching you and even more so on TV. You make me laugh and you to the point and straight. I love that honesty. Thank so you. carry on doing what you're doing and see you soon, hopefully, in Abu Dhabi. Say boom, brother. Say boom. <laughs> Thank you. All right.